it sounds like it's just continuing to escalate further and further right now. Yeah, I think the scale of the public fighting is something that we didn't expect. It's really getting out of hand now. This concerted briefing by the Palace to the Times newspaper in London that um, a number of staff um, who worked for uh, Meghan were mistreated or were bullied, um, you know, it's very obvious that they have planted that um, as an attack on her ahead of this big interview. And it's somewhat rich when you consider that you know, the royal family have spent hundreds of years bullying and mistreating their staff. That's one of the main things that royal families do. Um, and you don't have to go back far in history either. You know, Prince Andrew, Princess Anne, Princess Margaret were renowned for the awful way that they treated um, people in the palace. And, you know, for example, with Prince Andrew, it didn't turn out so well, did it? No, it didn't indeed, especially with the, with the, the Jeffrey Epstein case. Uh, Iris Makler, uh, again, uh, in Australia, what are they making of all of this? Um, a funny friend of mine said that uh, she always thought that you should try and get on with your mother-in-law. <laughs> you shouldn't have a, a public spat with her. Uh, and, and it's quite interesting, you know, I all, the royal family is followed in Australia despite some people's Republican leanings almost as much as, as closely as it's followed in the UK. So this is a very live story. And the problem that Nico raises, you know, if you're going to start investigating Meghan Markle. Why aren't you investigating Prince Andrew? He's done much more serious things. If you're going to start taking um, his, his military honours away from the prin Prince Harry, why not do that with Prince Andrew? So all of this hypocrisy is shown up in a fight. I mean, maybe he chose her. Some psychologist was talking on Australian television and said that perhaps Harry chose Meghan because he wanted to move away from this family because he was still so, the treatment of his mother, he was still so conflicted about that. And she's certainly leading him down that path and, and he is going there. All right, the, the tabloids is always taking sides, uh, conservative papers turning on, on Meghan Markle uh, and the left-leaning papers giving a hearing uh, to both sides. It's interesting, I'm talking about Meghan Markle, I'm not talking about Prince Harry. The, 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 the tabloids that are blasting her are relatively subdued when it comes to Prince Harry. I mean, I... What I don't understand is um, giving the interview to Oprah. Like, if you are wanting to move away from this drama and, you know, go back to living a normal life and so on, why, I, I don't understand why, why you, it, it, it's almost like she wants the royal cake and eat it too. You know, if you're leaving the, the royal family and you want to have a different kind of life, why are you participating in this? If I were Meghan Markle, I would go back to acting and, and, you know, making TV series. You know, she was pretty good and not get involved in this drama and, and escalate the situation. I totally understand her. I think it's just another kind of provocation to give this interview uh, in the States and not to any British tabloids. And uh, it's also a generational thing because the tabloids are read by more older people and... I mean, they have a very ambiguous uh, stand because on the one hand, they, they are at war with the tabloids, but on the other hand, they present themselves at social media and they do contracts with Netflix and Spotify. So they're in between and uh, they're just looking for a new life. And on the other hand, they, they still like to provoke something and, and but that's what I'm saying though why engage it? in this you know why because it's almost like they're trying to the reshape victim. the royal family from outside instead no, it's of part leaving of the strategy they, they want to be the victim but exactly why play the strategy why play this N game Nico Hines your thoughts well, it's interesting. The thing is, um, the royal family had a huge opportunity here to embrace this new world that Meghan Markle understands and that they don't understand. Um, you know, you only had to look at the kind of social media clips that the royal family did in the pre-Meghan era, these kind of embarrassing um, looks to camera and awkward moments. Meghan Markle is a proper star of the 21st century. And the monarchy, let's face it, has been decaying since its height in the you know late 16th, 17th century. <laughs> um, and they needed a rebirth. And Meghan Markle was this dream product for them that they could have relaunched themselves. Because when the Queen goes, I'm sorry, but Prince Charles is not going to be ripping up any trees in terms of becoming a global celebrity. And they've, they've blown their chance. <laughs>
<laughs> They've blown their chance. That's it. <laughs> Iris Markler, you agree? Wow, have they blown their chance? You know, they're great survivors. Um, and I'm not sure they've blown their chance entirely. They've blown their chance, perhaps, to re what Nico says is right, to remake themselves. But I think they'll continue in their English uh, quaint, if you like, um, the firm kind of way for quite a while. I don't think they may not be loved in the same way, although I do think William and Kate are more popular. Uh, not Charles, it's true. He won't ever recover from the Diane, from all of the Diana meant. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think they're here for a while yet. Uh, we're stuck with them and the UK is definitely stuck with them.